think what we'll end up doing is uh, I've had some people requesting that I do all the pendants again. I could try that one, I suppose. No dungeon chats, only the key ones, because we can see which ones the keys are. <laughs> so what are people feeling more? Try to get all the pendants or ignore all the chests aside from the key ones? Uh, no smell or hearing wouldn't be that bad. Thanks, Chris. Go for the pendant. Okay. The pendant should be a nice low stress run compared to the last one. <laughs> All right, we're doing pendants again then. So the last time I did this, it actually went pretty smoothly, and then I accidentally killed myself. But I was able to find the pendant again before the end. Because, <laughs> uh, the, yeah. All the pendants means you have the pendant of revival. So this one is Abigail from Stardew Valley. Uh, she's on my list in general because in Stardew she wants to become an adventurer. Oh yeah, I prefer hoarding everything than avoiding stuff. Uh, when I was trying to avoid getting any parts, that went very poorly at times. Oh yeah, I can update on Twitch. I'm gonna leave... Uh... YouTube the same, so I don't forget to switch it back. Let's just call it that for now. It's now chill. But, uh, yeah, thanks for reminding me to update this stream description. <laughs> I think Haley is the only one that I haven't managed to finish the romance track yet in, uh, Stardew Royale. I think with the guys, I haven't gone through Shane and uh, Arlie the Doctor properly. Because uh, I mostly forget about the Doctor until much later. And Shane's is mostly depressing. <laughs> I have hundreds of hours in Stardew, so I've done a bunch of runs of those. <laughs> Someday I might do a Stardew Valley thing with randomized everything and crowd control on. I've been undecided if I should or... Just ignore it for now. I've got no money. Because the issue with Stardew is it takes a while to go through. We take a level 2 sword. It's all we found on the shopless run last time. Give me some money. I need money for pendants and a better shield. What did I miss in that? Did I miss a pot somewhere? No? Weird.
Usually loops give something, so I gotta go double check them when I go through one and didn't end up with anything. Yeah, aside from Stardew, I'm tempted to do Sun Valley at some point. Or, not Sun Valley, Sun Haven. Just kind of a fantasy version of Stardew Valley. That one I haven't played at all. But I do have it. Uh, where did the key go? Here? Here. <laughs> so that's probably the right way. That's not anything of interest. It's giving me no money. Any pushable blocks here? Does not look like it. There's some money. Woot! <laughs> yeah, wild. So many great items, and I had no money to buy anything. I've got the bombs to test this. I don't know if I've seen that pattern of, uh, rupees before. So now we have some money. Like, better equipment's not a bad thing, but top priority is either pendants or inventory bag. Mons? Like, Pokemons? <laughs> Or Digimons? Or Coromons? Or... I don't think they're actually called Palmons. Yay, arrows! We are going to use you. Money Mons. Wimpods in chat. It would have been funny if it was the uh, Pokemon that's a treasure chest. We need a lot of money for town. We don't want to leave a bunch of pendants at town if there's a chance. So we got a key over there. <laughs> That's fair. I fell out hard with Pokemon for a long time. And then I caught Jaden Animation's Nuzlocke video. And that made me interested in doing Nuzlocke. So I've been doing those for a bit since then. I am, however, not amazing at Pokemon. I'm not bad, but I'm not amazing. Uh, I'm not actually sure how many arrow shots those take. I don't usually have a bow for that. Where the heck is this place? Yep. Uh, I quite enjoy Jane Animation stuff. So I um, mention her from time to time. <laughs> There it is. Uh, we're not hiding this room. Uh, 
I didn't mean to pick you up. Yeah, if I get the bow before the boss fight, I can totally give it a try. I don't have much healing, so we're gonna use those. The, uh, bomb route is very effective, though. None of those are pushable. Not doing great on finding anything in this run. That's fine. Still far less stressful than shopless. <laughs> I'm so glad that uh, challenge is done. I'm very excited for the new challenges when they're coming in the next version. Very curious what they end up being. Okay, there's a door here. Bombs and fire are good solutions. Uh, I tend to like both myself for uh, video game stuff. I don't shy away from ice as well, though. A good ice mechanic can be a lot of fun, too. Just shattering enemies. But I play a lot of mages in video games. But I do a lot of support as well. Like, if I ever get lured into some sort of game with various classes, I tend to enjoy being some sort of healer support character. As long as no one has any expectations for me. Because that was one of the things that always uh, annoyed me when playing uh, MMOs a while back, was most people assumed you played a healer a specific way that was meta and got very upset at you when you told them, no, I don't know that spell. Oh, hey, it's Justin. It's a secret to every or dangerous to go alone. Give me some money. <laughs> but I don't really do much in the way of MMOs. I tend to just get bored of them pretty quickly. They are something that I enjoy the concept of, but I tend to switch games a lot that don't have a good content cycle. And a lot of MMOs end up going into the grind. <laughs> See... I can get that feeling, Diana, but in general, I just want to goof around. So, if there's a spell that the healer gets, say, speak to animals that does nothing useful besides let me have dialogues with animals, I'm probably going to take that over a higher tier heal early on. Because that's just more fun for me. I will take non-meta stuff just to goof around and have fun. And a lot of people don't seem to understand the idea of not trying to play a meta character. Yeah. I think I mentioned during the Questmaster stream have Boulder's Gate 3 now, I just need to play more of it off-stream. So if I do it on-stream, it's going to be with other people. 
And if I'm doing it on stream with other people, we are all going to be goofing around. And I want to make sure I at least know how the story goes and whatnot before I do that. Yep, in general, I don't really try to play team games. I play co-op games with my friends. But especially anything with serious team stuff going on. Um, that people are expecting you to fill a role specifically, I tend to just avoid. I do not like people or taking video games way too seriously. And that's also fair. I can enjoy the grind from time to time, depending on the game. Like, you don't have to grind to build a good character in Disgaea, but you can keep grinding well beyond this stuff. Like, the main story of Disgaea, you only need to be level 80 or so to trivialize it, and it's really easy to get there. But all the extra content and just building up the numbers is really satisfying for me. So I'll usually be in the thousands before I even finish the story, because I'll just mess with other stuff in that. <laughs> How many guinea pigs do you have now, Royal? Zero? Okay. Ah. Uh, yeah, I know Fan4 has a bunch of uh, guinea pigs as well. But... Yeah, it definitely makes sense to want another one if you have zero right now. Six dogs and one cat. That's a lot of dogs. <laughs> I'm generally allergic to dogs anyway, but I don't know if I could handle more than one or two dogs. As dogs like a lot of attention. No red kinstone. I've seen shops, so I know this isn't a shopless run. I haven't seen a shop since I got money. <laughs> Yeah, I've had multiple cats over my life that are very dog-like. Uh, my black cat that's no longer around very much hung out with people and uh, begged for food and chased stuff like a dog. long-term plans for this, but at the same time, we are getting the Pendant of Wealth. There's the bow, but I don't really have space for it. can get a sword, though. But, even if I wasn't allergic to dogs, I am very much a cat person. Go figure, the uh, fox cat is a cat person. Mm, we have two keys. They go somewhere. Are they to the right? And then up. Oh, I missed. Long hair, white Persian female cat who I still have for each. I've had for years. I'm allergic, still allergic to her. No, nope, that's totally fair. Uh, Celia is slightly allergic to cats.
I'd argue in general, pets are a uh, mutually beneficial situation. They give you companionship and uh, good vibes, while uh, you give them a home and food and whatnot. There's the key. Yep, cats do a decent job at taking care of spiders or flies until they get old and stop caring. That being said, I often try to coexist with my spiders, too. They're mostly beneficial things. Though, if they get too big or too close to me, they tend to no longer survive. <laughs> Two paths here. Left feels more right. Don't buy either of that, because it's A, expensive, and B, not super worth it. Do probably buy these. We have Monday for pendants if they show up still, but give us better defense to help protect us. Our friends and companions, just use them for work. There's nothing you doing to force them to do anything you want. Good pet R is a pet. It's a poor word. It's more like a family member. Not how you go up with animals, but encourage your bride to da da da. <laughs> Negative saving about that. Nope, that's totally fair. Yeah. Now, my cat's definitely part of my family. <laughs> yeah. Hey, okay, I can charge my rod. I'm in a loop that goes this way, aren't I? Is escaped. No one caught it. Oh, where does the crystal go? Or, yeah. I hit that, but I didn't find any keys. Ah, here.
All right, bunch of map left. There's one of the pendants, but it's so expensive. <laughs> yes, I'm very much a certified animal lover myself. Yeah, we're gonna drop this for now. Four years ago, she stopped eating because she was too stressed out. I'm electrifying myself still. Stop flashing. Two toddlers in the house. Only person the cat was willing to approach when the house needed to be for us. I was offering offer her and took her despite knowing how extremely allergic I was. Yeah. Stress can have a huge effect on cats. Uh, for the longest time, my cat was having serious UTI issues. Because uh, of stress and whatnot. And, like, I can't leave her long in her old age because I am her human. The one that if I'm not around, she starts getting really stressed out. <laughs> but she's also there for me when I need some uh, company or I'm just having a down day. This is an annoying room. <laughs> I think at this point I'm just gonna say instead of arguing about pet stuff, that we should just focus on good vibes. I don't really want the uh, stream to end up into a big debate or being a downer. <laughs> I think we ignore the armor for now. This key, though. Do I have anything to give up for the, uh... Bow? I guess I give up the arrows for the bow for right now. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I don't mind a little uh, discussions here and there, but I generally prefer uh, fun vibes. Well, that was not much money for how much health they took. <laughs> it's always my goal that people uh, hang out in my streams and just have a good time and leave just feeling good and nice, etc. Alright, we made it to town. We need an inventory bag for sure. Uh, my Halloween was mostly a bust because Celia was out of town and, uh, My Halloween plan for the night broke because Witchet had too many new players. So we weren't able to uh, play Witchet that night. 
but I still had a decent time. I always like the vibes of Halloween. And it's not like I didn't have a big event with Apollo beforehand with all that crazy lethal company that was leading up to the Halloween stuff. Okay, Diana. I'm gonna need you to calm it here. We're definitely not getting on that topic. Thanks, Super Nash Bros. Yeah, the lethal was crazy and just a lot of fun. Definitely gonna have to try that at some point again if uh, that all gets lined up again. Alright, just two pendants in here. This makes this a bit trickier. I'm always happy to hear when uh, people are enjoying my playthroughs. I enjoy playing through the game in general, but I'm glad other people are enjoying it too. Oh hey, we got our arrows back. That's good. There wasn't a pendant of wealth in there, so not much we can do with that. Yeah, ideally next year Celia will be around. Celia loves dressing up and doing that stuff for Halloween. And then they got stuck on a business trip. <laughs> yeah, I've been figuring out more and more of the logic of the game and that helps with a lot of the patterns. Yeah, I can go decently fast in some. Uh, a lot of times I'm taking my time just because I enjoy it. But you get to see pretty much everything in. And then let's see, aside from a different color, coat, pixel art, which I'll change in these mods from the original Link to the Past. I uh, haven't played the real one. Oh, a ton. So, in the original Link to the Past, there is the overworld, set dungeons, all that stuff that you're doing. This one has complete everything completely randomized. And you start with pretty much nothing at the beginning, and then build yourself up across the way. <laughs> oh, an egg! And now you turn into bunny. Uh, speed is also one of the things. This has a run button, unlike... Uh, the original Link to the Past. You got way up here, huh? Bad Kukos. Well, you do get the Pegasus boots in the original Link to the Past. But Link to the Past is one of my favorite Zelda games, if not my favorite. So if you like Zelda games at all, I do recommend trying Link to the Past at some point. It still holds up pretty well. Like, the original Zelda can be quite hard. But... I think Link to the Past is still decently balanced. Some parts of it are definitely hard, don't get me wrong. Um, at least one of the dungeons is kind of hard to navigate your first time. But I think the flow of the game is nice, and if you like Zelda games and never played the original Link to the Past, you will discover how much of the original DNA of Zelda is within Link to the Past. No, nope, we're gonna drop you. No, we're not. You're gonna show up three times if I do that. Oh, that's cool. I've been a big Zelda fan uh, most of my life, if not pretty much all of it. Always enjoyed it, and I've played through most of them. 
I've missed a couple of the handheld ones, like Minish Cap, Seasons, and Oracles, but I've beat a good chunk of the others. Uh, Skyward Sword on a, and on is where I started struggling to beat them all. That's cool. I had a funny period over the last five years or so. I think it was more than five. Where my friends forgot I was a Zelda fan because I wasn't into Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I legitimately had one friend come over one day and go, why do you own all the Zelda amiibo? You don't like Zelda? I'm like, yeah, I do. I still adore Zelda. I just don't like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that, uh, Nash. I do feel like I have this down pretty much or pretty well, and I totally understand that frustration watching someone not do well in a game you know well. That being said, I also a lot of times enjoy watching that, but I can only watch for so long before it gets frustrating when they're just trying the same thing over and over again and being stuck. <laughs> and that's totally fair, uh, Chris. I have nothing against Breath of the Wild. It just really wasn't for me. It wasn't what I wanted from a Zelda game. But I know tons of people loved it, and it's brought uh, Zelda to a new level of mainstream that it wasn't quite at for a long time. Because while people talk about Ocarina of Time all the time, uh, for a period there, it was popular, but not huge. And then Breath of the Wild really helped elevate it to another level. Did I get this? Yes. So I need spaces for that. Is there a bomb peg in here? Is there anything that increases my holding? this. <laughs> nah, that's fair, Nash. But it's also fun watching people that aren't super experienced uh, slowly learn stuff and just evolve. On, those were under 300 combined. Yep. And like me, I just didn't love micromanaging my weapons, etc. As was brought up, they were breaking way too fast for my liking. But I also found this climb speed a little bit too slow. Alright, three pendants down. The rest of these are going to be a bit trickier. I need to make sure to save money for pendants. Yep, I definitely know a number of people that have taken gaming skills for granted. Um, I still introduce my family to some games, and am just, at times, there's only two buttons, it's not that hard, but I understand. Like, I try not to take my stuff, uh, my gaming skills for granted. I don't super want to be known as a high skill streamer because then people start really expecting you to do high skill stuff all the time. But I can't deny that at times I am a high-ish skill streamer. <laughs> that was made abundantly clear when I realized uh, people had been doing runs of Dungeons of Infinity for about a week before I got to my first kill and just on a couple runs because I beat the boss on the, my third run, I believe it was. Or my third time getting to him. It was a three of something. And that's just more of a 
Okay, I'm not too bad at these video game things sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can't honestly remember if my first console was the SNES or the Super Nintendo. Uh, I got them both as hand-me-downs for my aunt. Oh yeah, I'd absolutely get destroyed in an RTS. Really, any serious competitive game I get destroyed, because unless I'm just kind of doing my own thing, I typically don't get invested enough to really learn stuff. Like, I did a bunch of runs of uh, Link to the Past randomized before I started looking at the glitches seriously. I watched some other people's streams, saw some stuff like the mirror glitch, and was like, I need to learn that, which just deletes items. But it wasn't until more recently that I more seriously learned some of the glitches, and I still have more to learn. But it takes me getting the right moods and focus for stuff. Um... Any more inventory space? Sorry, if I said SNES and Super Nintendo, I meant NES and Super Nintendo. I don't know which one I got first and was starting to play with. Yeah. Big RTS players, really competitive gamers in general. Just fast reactions and whatnot. Very important to a lot of that stuff. And I've got okay reactions, but nothing super duper crazy. We're just gonna go. But. I just, in general, also don't like super competitive gaming. I've mentioned that before, but like, in college I played some Smash Brothers pretty seriously, and I eventually got to the point where I felt like I was losing, period. I either was winning, and people were getting mad at me, or uh, actually losing the matches from time to time, and, you know, actually losing doesn't feel great either. So, I mostly gave up playing seriously in any competitive game around then. I'll still play goofy competitive games, golf with your friends, etc. And I don't mind, like, the hide-and-seek games or some social discussion stuff. I don't really love Among Us. But I don't mind some of the Among Us clones. And the lack of love for Among Us is mostly most Among Us players play have gotten to the point where they just know every little detail. So if you aren't allowed to reproduce every little detail when lying, they tend to just call you out. Could also be little kids, yes, but I tend to avoid uh, public games quite a bit. <laughs> I, in general, have a no playing with randos rule. I'm open to a lot of collabs with people, but you're never going to find me in a public room willingly most of the time. I think I've done that maybe three times in the last five years or so. <laughs> and 
of note, I'm including uh, Legends of Runeterra in there, where I was playing the <laughs> random deck. I played exactly one match, and in that one match, uh, as soon as I started winning, the person on the other side started playing where every single move they took lasted until just before the timeout to try to get me to quit. Oh yeah, this is the second boss of Link to the Past. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, if you go play Link to the Past, don't expect the bow to work quite like it does in this game. This game launches it instantly, Link to the Past has some build-up and they move slower. Everything's just a little bit faster in this game. Yeah, I do a lot of games talking to people on Discord. But Discord also has a pretty solid system of being able to block people quickly, and I just don't associate with people that will use language that I do not approve of. Yeah, bomb or spin attack is totally a valid choice for that boss. I like using arrows in this game for it. <laughs> uh, like the stuff that's against my uh, stream rules and discard rules, the hate speech and whatnot. Jerks, just die. This room's a pain. Anything fun in here? Could look at the map in general. I got the key, it goes over there. Yeah, I'm curious if we'll see more boss bosses from Link to the Past, since we just have the Light World bosses in this game. And there's a lot of fun bosses there. Big shop, you got any pendants for me? No. Yeah, you could make the magic cloak on cloak uh, while attacking. That would probably balance it out more for this. That would feel a lot different than the uh, Link to the Past one then. Yep, we got bacon. Lots of helmets. Grab some money from that. Yes, bacon sword. We'll see if we end up with the butter sword. But now I can kill traps in this game, which is some a fun difference from Link to the Past. That worked out better than I expected. I was just gonna run past them. Uh, still no pendants. Yep, Tempered Master Sword of Vanilla. I like the extra green sword in this. Though I believe the uh, Magic Sword, the level 4 sword, also um, makes you immune to the electrical damage in the actual Link to the Past. 
Never remember to test it. I definitely have at least one now. Yeah, I know Justin's mentioned adding another zone that you can choose through with an extra boss. Money's good. Yep, you absolutely could. Still a ton of stuff you could potentially add to the game, depending on what you want to do. Uh, balance and fun and whatnot's always important. <laughs> uh, the platform moth is so scary. Not as scary in the randomizer if you get it in a different room. Indeed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure more secrets and what's not definitely on the list. Yeah, that room's a lot of fun, etc. And uh, I'd love to see more rooms like that. I know Justin mentioned he wanted to put more rooms like that in there, but obviously those take a decent amount of time and energy. We're gonna use you over the cape. More more money is a good thing. But yeah, no. The timetable on Dungeons Affinity on uh, my timeline has just been good for me. Because I picked up uh Link to the Past and Link to the Past randomizers in July, early August, and then Dungeons of Infinity came out. I got to it in the middle of September. Eek! Eek! I gotta stop doing that. What healing do I have? Just the one? If I screw up too much, I'm gonna have to spend all of my, uh, my pendant. And I need that pendant. It's been a lot of fun just uh, playing one of my favorite Zelda games, if not favorite Zelda game, and uh, having other people want to join me and hang out while I do that. Yeah, creativity in a lot of the items is great. Um... Some of the items are straight up from the Zelda series, but like all the rods and whatnot are roguelike additions. Oops, you gotta be awake first. As for why Justin hasn't been issued a cease and desist, it's most likely because he's not charging anything from it, and it is uh, most likely covered under derivative work. Like, using the assets is a bit of a no-no. But it's not like Nintendo will really be able to get anything out of Justin since he's not selling it. So they'd have to argue that it's damaging them in some way. And since it is a derivative work that like people will look at and see Legend of Zelda, but we'll know that this isn't an official thing. This just doesn't exist. Um, it's likely not worth Nintendo pursuing. A lot of companies allow stuff like this or, you know, fan modifications and whatnot. And this basically just boils down to being a standalone fan, fan mod. That too. You're getting a lot of people checking out the Zelda Legacy games because of this. A 
fault. That's fair. Oh, they have Blind and Helmosaur as a boss. Uh, absolutely, uh, Nash. Though, uh, Helmosaur is a little trickier if you don't design it to be able to be hit with the sword, because you can't guarantee people will have bombs. But Blind absolutely could. We have Blind heads around. It would actually be funny to, uh, have Blind in here to make more sense of all the flying heads later in the game. Yep, I'm not saying it's impossible Nintendo could issue a cease and desist and whatnot, but in general, it's not in their best interest to. They have a right to protect their IP, but there is also the court of fan opinion. And, like, this is hurting nothing. Yeah, I love a bunch of mods and whatnot, too. Like, another one that's gotten a good amount of attention, but also hasn't gotten a cease and desist as far as I know, is uh, Pokemon Infinite Fusion. Another standalone one. Indeed. Eek. Fans giving their own take on stuff and doing stuff that the companies won't. Just a lot of fun. Or, uh, like... One of the pendants. Uh, I can double check. I don't see a pushable one in here. Oh yeah, I absolutely also prefer when the companies are embracing them. And like, some companies do a better job with it than others. Uh, Sega historically has actually done a pretty good job embracing them. Yep. I've got the money. We can agree to their tunic. So, I won't disagree that Nintendo is sometimes the bad guy. But, there's also pretty accepted uh, rules about how doing it. A lot of times when Nintendo's being the quote-unquote bad guy, it's because the people involved are profiting from it in a way they shouldn't be seeking trying to do. That being said, uh, being paid for mods and whatnot, totally different conversation, I think any creative that puts in a lot of work uh, should get potentially paid for it. Yeah, in general, most people don't go after the mods unless uh, they are paid or otherwise potentially damaging the brand in some way. And that would be, you know, adding inappropriate stuff to the game and that getting popular, where the company might step in and try to put a hammer down so it stops spreading. Yep, ideally, Nintendo doesn't do anything about the YouTube music. Well, if they did anything, I would love them to crack down on the troll music people, but... <laughs> yep, Justin's done an amazing job for that. 
Yeah, it was kind of funny with people rebelling against the paid mods for Bethesda. But really, like, if people have the blessing of the company to make paid mods, and they end up making an expansion story that's 20, 30 hours, like, full DLC effectively, I think, realistically, there should be an avenue for them to be able to pay for it. Uh, as for troll music, uh, when I play Link to the Past, two songs in there, there are troll copywriters out there that will make claims on the music. They have no accession, association to Nintendo, uh, but they will claim that I am violating their copyright of the music that is Nintendo's music. And if I was making money off the videos, unless I disputed the claim, which is a month-long process and just a huge pain, they would get all revenue from the ads and whatnot on the video. So there's just a bunch of companies trolling the music as patent trolls and trying to take everything. And of all the companies that I've streamed games from now, uh, Nintendo is by far the worst at cracking down on them. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, like, it just sucks to see all the copyright stuff on the Nintendo stuff I do, which, if it was Nintendo, perfectly fine. Take the revenue, etc. Thank you for not trying to stop me from playing your games. I don't care. But since it's obvious that it's not Nintendo, it's just really annoying. Like, on the plus side, at least with YouTube, and like you said, Twitch mutes it as well, uh, YouTube has been working on a tool that isolates the music and manages to do, from my experience messing with it, a pretty decent job of removing the music without ruining the audio file for everything else. But we take that. So you're able to remove the copywritten music at least. It just takes like a day for it to process. Yes, Butter Sword! Yeah, of all the games... I think the only one that I got hit harder with copyright stuff was, uh, oh, what was the name of it? I have to look it up. <laughs> you really want, but the butter sword in this case is pretty sharp. Ah, uh, what was the name of the game? It was one of the games I played for Pride Month. That I'm not allowed to have it up even on the uh, YouTube because they put a copyright claim on it to the point that um, they just blocked the video in general. Uh, in fact, it can be. Uh, I have OBS set up. So everything is separated into its own audio tracks. So... For example... My game, my Discord, my music player... Um, my speaking, etc. are all their own tracks. So if there is something in the game I need to remove, I can do that manually. That being said... Just isolating it in general 
is trickier because uh, that's just all the game audio. In most games, at least by default, they don't support splitting out the audio of the game into multiple different tracks. If you, for example, watch someone's video that has Pokemon all spliced up, but all the sound effects and music are still going, uh, that means the editor took the time to redo the music and sound effects, most likely. <laughs> um, it's not too, too difficult to do. Um, like, I also personally do not have any access to my... Um, this is good find so far. Uh, desktop audio, so I can't accidentally get anything from my desktop on here. I muted all of that. Um, there's tutorials on YouTube. I have one saved somewhere. Yeah, time AD and focus with ADHD can totally be a thing. I know that very well. Um, okay, we're going to do blue first of all. But what happened to me that got me really motivated to split everything up was two different things. Uh, first of all, I got a call from Walgreens Pharmacy once, and technically my ringtone's copywritten, but I wasn't worried about that. But in turning off the whole thing, I accidentally dropped it on my keyboard and started my music that is very much copyrighted. I think it was Linkin Park playing or something like that at that point. And that was a huge problem. I didn't get in trouble for it, but it was very much a... I could have gotten in trouble for it, so I needed to fix that. The other thing that was going on was when I was doing collabs and, you know, doing some recording with my friends with Discord, they were, uh, you know, just talking too much. Uh, I'm not going to use the cape. I'll just grab that instead. So I needed a way to make my uh, friends go away. <laughs> so that was the other thing. So I had to figure out how to start removing single things from that. But also just having them on different tracks uh, works well for the purpose of maybe, just maybe, I didn't realize that my audio mixing was slightly off. And I did this before, too. I'm too quiet, I'm too loud, my game's too quiet, etc. Uh, with having them on different cra tracks, that means when I go to DaVinci Resolve and go edit something, I can take the time to change the volume of stuff, which can make a uploaded video just sound way better. How many shops do I have? A couple. We got two pendants we still need. Uh, pendant of magic and pendant of immunity. <laughs> yeah, I got no problems with uh, the upper friends in general. They are often a lot of fun, and I've been trying to get better about stuff like that. No, I need to open two treasures. There should be two here. But, like, in the middle of a Pokemon run, when my friend is talking about, you know, Sears and JCPenney's history of crashing and whatnot, uh, and just intermittently doing stuff during, like, battles and whatnot, uh, that stuff I don't really want most of the time. Um, I'm not sure where Justin got the UI from or designed it. Um. There's one chest. I do believe I recall that he's planning on redesigning the UI some. That might be specifically... Uh, that... And no, I can't destroy the fire bar traps with my sword, unfortunately. 
Those and the beams. Beamos, I think is the name, right? Those can't be destroyed by this level sword. Now, if you match the AoE magic with the right colors, throw uh, fire on the ice, ice on the fire, and I don't remember what the third one takes. Uh, then you can avoid those fires, turn them off, etc. Yeah, I still enjoy beating up traps and whatnot in general. It's a lot of fun, especially when those traps have hurt me oh so much in uh, A Link to the Past. Gotta check the room. End it. End it. Uh, a lot of rupees and the bow, I think, are what I have to get rid of, and that's not great. I really hope this shop up here has the uh, last inventory bag. I really need that. Hit you repeatedly. Yeah. So I don't know what Justin has planned for the uh, updated final fight, but there is a plan to eventually update that fight. And I know a Ganon phase is not off the table. in here. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun watching this. Uh, it's totally a enjoyable thing to play as long as you don't mind it being difficult. I had plenty of people come in and tell me I make it look easy. All right, there's one of the pendants. That gets dropped for sure. Um, no bag here. We gamba. That didn't help. Oh yeah. A uh, ton of people were upset with their items being taken away. I will never deny that's a feel bad. Um, I have multiple streamer friends that got to the uh, final fight and after the items were taken away, quit the game. Even though they were enjoying it beforehand. Uh, as for Nash, uh, yeah, I'm lighting the torches just to see if a chest appears. I am still hunting for one last pendant, so I really am just trying anything to get it right now. <laughs> yep, even if the room is cleared, uh, the trigger for the chest to appear is just all the torches being lit. It has nothing to do with the enemies being there or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Link to the Past itself is a lot simpler than this in terms of difficulty. But don't get me wrong, you will die playing Link to the Past, most likely. I still die most of the time in that. But that has, you know, checkpoints and saves. I can destroy that trap, I don't need to be afraid of it. Fill my health back up. 
Yeah, no. And it would feel much better if you could uh, get your items back from the fight. I don't disagree. I also totally understand how it ended up being the way it was. Justin has outright said uh, at that point he was burnt out and the boss became what it was because it was, you know, hard to make sure it was an interesting fight regardless of what items you have. Yep, you get health and health items. Like, it's a well-designed roguelike in general. Oh, we buy this. Um, don't really want to carry that. I waste money on this. Yeah, I understand the frustrations of the final boss, but as I've made very obvious through my playthroughs now, if you know what you're doing and can just do your patterns well, the final boss is well designed. But I will never say, uh, you know, it's not a mean fight. Okay. This probably is the toughest part here. <laughs> As I have no healing for this room, this boss will not drop any. So if I do this poorly, the run will end. It's one of the more likely things to kill me. Though sometimes, it just doesn't kill me. <laughs> like at all. But every once in a while, it loves trapping me in a corner and attacking the crap out of me. I think this one's going all right, though. There I go down the hall. There we go. <laughs> yes, he's the third boss in Link to the Past, and is not a super difficult boss, but is frustrating, because they knew that you were going to have a lot of issues with him, so they give you a ton of health. But because the way Link to the Past works, if you leave a room, the enemies go back to full health, and that boss causes you to leave the room. Oh, absolutely, Matthew. I'm not against the extra phase. All right, we've got five shops to find one pendant. I didn't see you coming. So many of these guys. Luckily, I have high defense. But still, they're a pain. <laughs> yeah, the music here is fun. Wait, first shop, do you have my item? You do! Which unfortunately means my bow is going away, I think. I don't want to lose any defense, and I can't get rid of any of the pendants. Yeah, if you enjoy the, uh... Got into the Zelda games because Breath of the Wild and you're playing through it. Uh... I really hope you enjoy Link to the Past when you get to it. I've found a very few people that end up enjoying Zelda that dislike Link to the Past. It's not a perfect game, uh, in general, but at least for me, it's near perfect. Just, especially with how old it is, everything is so nicely designed and just so much of the DNA of uh, Zelda.
Yep, I could see that. Yeah, I faced the boss twice. The first time I died really fast because I didn't know what I was doing. The second time... I got to five hits, I think it was. And then... Uh, I just took my own footage and watched that. And then beat it the third time because I was figuring out the patterns. Yeah, I'm hard-pressed to actually say there's a Zelda game that I like more than Link to the Past in general. But there's definitely days where others would maybe surpass it. Item bag! Item bag! I still want the item bag! Then I can carry some healing on top of this. And some attack magic. I do quite like uh, Link's Awakening as well, but I s mentioned I need to go through Minish Cap and Season and Oracles properly to get my views on those. But I'm still curious when I will get around to those, partially because... Well, I'm going to continue doing Link to the Past randomizers because I enjoy them. Part of me keeps wanting to do uh, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask and randomizing those. But that's going to be an extra difficult task. And that's fair. Best overall is, yeah, a decent debate. Really didn't need to go in here. I can just rush for the wizard now. Oh yeah, no, Link to Pass is an amazing uh, thing for the console. Don't worry, I enjoy, as I said, watching people fumble around a bit. I just will probably eventually go, if you ever want help, just let me know. But I try not to spoil anything for anyone. Um, the person I raided into last night, that one got on the edge of my uh, being a little painful to watch because she got stuck in one of the dungeons trying to figure out a puzzle for over an hour. But she was very adamant that she didn't want help, so I didn't try to help. But it definitely was painful watching for an hour someone trying to get through a puzzle. Okay, we gotta warp up and warp over there. Oh, there's a key here. <laughs> That's fair, Drew. I made it the whole time. Is there a color switch here then? Is that what's preventing me from going right? No. Secret door is near. Yep. If you end up asking for hints from me, I usually try to give out hints in a way that's not the straight out explanation from the get go and try to guide you there. But yeah, some people can get a little bossy. In general, I don't mind backseat gaming myself. Uh, the only time I get a little bit more 
touchy about it is, like, I don't care about spoilers in general, but if I'm playing a story-based game, and for the usual example, because everyone knows the spoiler, but if I started playing Final Fantasy VII, I don't want you coming in here and going, it sucks that she dies in 20 hours for, you know, the character that dies. And thanks so much for the follow, Vesher. It always means so much when people want to follow me, because I love having people around just hanging out, and I've mentioned plenty of times, I like just spreading good vibes, and people following means they're enjoying those vibes, and ideally just having better days. I should stop pick. Oh no, I'm immune to tra or curses. Oh yeah, and I totally get that. Uh, at times, I definitely want to have that whole feeling too. At other times, I will just outright go, "Hey chat, what am I missing?" And it is a lovely resource, especially in like Quest Master, where. I totally overlooked a door and am struggling because of it. <laughs> Which, for anyone that hasn't seen any of my Questmaster streams, that is an indie Zelda Maker game where it's just Zelda Maker, effectively. Unique assets for it, very uh, Minish Cap inspired with the art. But a lot of fun with a lot of user levels. But it means at times I can get very, very stuck. But like when I'm playing Pokemon, I don't care if people want to give me advice on what to do. I won't always listen. I make no promises I'm going to listen to chat's advice. <laughs> but I'm open to it. That's good to hear. I haven't played Minish Cap, so I'm very much looking forward to giving that a go sometime. I still need to figure out what I'm doing for Thursday, though. Which, like, I could do Minish Cap, but, like, part of the reason my Thursday's TBD is I'm kind of in between doing a more narrative game right now. And the two I'm leaning towards are a thousand resist or um slay the princess. As I've heard good things about both of them. Sure, I got no reason not to. That spaghetti. Got no reason to pick up the gem, but it's it's fun to have all the gems. But we shall see. I'll probably put up a poll in my Discord soon, asking what people want to see on the Thursday. Because like the last time I was in this position, uh, I ended up doing a key sanity run for Link to the Past Rando. Then. But I am, in general, just leaning towards doing the key sanity for the normal rando this week. Because I'm pretty sure I can fit it in the four hour time frame I have blocked off. Alright, we're going downstairs. I'm feeling pretty good about my pathing and everything in, uh, Link to the past anymore. To the point where Key Sanity just is a more interesting logic puzzle, so I want to see if I could do it in three and a half, four hours again. At some point, I'll have to do bush and pot and randomize entrance and whatnot, and that will just be crazy. Hello! 
Take my items. You have all eight pendants now. Ow. I was not prepared for a straight up middle shot at me. <laughs> that post is a little bit longer than I can read while doing this. Here we go. Watch a nice chill guy like he plays something I love. Better than I can ever. Yeah, it's something I've always appreciated about the internet, is just being able to interact with people across the world. I have so many friends that I would have never met without the internet, because they live on the other side of the world with me. Especially with my sleep schedule. Uh, it's nice to have a lot of European people to talk to when everyone else is asleep. <laughs> yeah, Aga is super fast in this. Regular shot. Mm, one more. There we go. Music nerd brain. I hear some Phantom Ganon World War song and I'm nerding out. <laughs> That's totally fair. Yeah, Zelda does a good job of reusing some of their music, but redoing it in a way that makes it unique still. 